Welcome back, everyone. We just talked about some of the Group of 5 teams that might just be making their way into the playoff this upcoming year. Definitely a lot of teams to watch, whether you want to watch Liberty or South Florida, a team that is really, really rising under Alex Golish. So that'll be fascinating to watch. But let's get into the best games of 2024. This is going to be a crazy year. There are so many incredible games, some new games that we haven't had in the past, some conference games that are going to be really, really interesting to watch as conference games coming up, and it's just going to be incredible. And a little bit of a spoiler alert before we start here, a lot of these games are going to be Big Ten or SEC games. Just fair warning, that's just kind of the way of the world right now. But let's start at number 10, and let's start with a game that maybe some people are overlooking a little bit, but I'm fascinated to see what happens. Missouri at Alabama on October 26th. This is a game that I think everyone just assumes Alabama's going to win because of the past, almost. Uh, it's a game that I think when you look at Alabama this upcoming season, there are question marks. You don't really know how Kalen DeBoer is going to take the helm now. By August 26th, we'll likely, or October 26th, excuse me, we'll likely know what he's going to look like. We'll likely know what his, uh, at least what this team is going to look like that year. But Missouri could be coming to town with a lot on their plate, uh, a, a huge, huge motivation where when you come into Alabama, there's always that chance that you make history. Every single team that has walked into that stadium over the last 10 years has felt that energy, and it was the same thing that happened with Texas a year ago where they made history. They were the first team to beat Bama under Saban by double digits at home, so just absolutely incredible that you know that place has had that many people walk out with L's over the last decade, and Missouri's a team with as much motivation as much energy going into this season as really anyone in the country and I think when you talk about most programs you know ascending to the top of the sport or getting to a place where they want to be where Missouri wants to be under Eli Drinkwitz you need that moment right you need that big time game that gets everyone's attention that makes sure everyone notices your team and this might just be it for Missouri I think it's going to be really tough obviously to win this game but I'm fascinated to see what happens because this might just be a coronation for Missouri in the future of college football going forward. And then I got Ole Miss at LSU on October 12th. I think this game is going to be fascinating. When you look at the SEC this upcoming year, Georgia's got to play at Alabama. They got to go to Texas. They got to play some games that they haven't necessarily had to play in the past. And some other teams are going to have to play some tougher games where these might be a game that decides the other team in Atlanta, frankly, because there are a lot of hurdles for some of the big-time teams in this conference, whether it's Texas, whether it's Georgia, whether it's Alabama. It would be a little bit hard for multiple of those teams to make the dance, and I think there's going to be one of these wild-card teams, whether it's Ole Miss or LSU or Texas A&M or someone that makes their way into Atlanta at the end of the year, and this might just be the game that decides it, at least for these two. So that'll be fascinating to watch, I think. This game is just going to be so much fun, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, and honestly, probably not too, too much defense like we saw last year, if I'm being totally honest. But uh, Florida State at Notre Dame on November 9th is a fascinating game to me because it's not a conference game. It's not necessarily the most important game in the world for the playoff because if Florida State takes care of business in the ACC and they win that conference, they're in. That's no problem. But I think this one is weirdly a game that both these teams need, especially Notre Dame in particular, because you need those resume builders where you can get them in a comp in a schedule that is not nearly as strong as the past couple of years for Notre Dame. But Florida State is a team that needs confidence, and they don't need necessarily confidence that they can beat ACC teams. They need confidence that they can beat everyone. And I think this is a game where they can show everyone that they're not just here to, you know, dominate the ACC. They're not just here to stick around for a couple of years and then fade back off into the oblivion. They're going to be a really good team for a, t a long time to come. And I think at Notre Dame is probably the best place to prove that to everyone. So it'll be fascinating to watch that game. 
Oregon at Michigan. Obviously, as you can see from the jerseys, not a game we've seen uh, very recently, but this is going to be fascinating to watch. I think very opposing styles, but kind of the same approach, weirdly enough. They're both very hard-nosed teams. They both kind of have that culture where you're not going to take shortcuts and you're going to do the thing, the hard things that no one else is willing to do in a lot of ways. So a lot of these, you know, teams have similar cultures, but different ways they go about business on the field. And I think this is going to be one of those games. When you talk about all the transfers that came in from Oregon compared to all the people that walked out for uh, uh, Michigan, I think it's going to be fascinating to watch how either of these teams kind of adapt to their new uh places in this conference possibly so it'll be fascinating to watch that game obviously all these new games are going to be really interesting but this might be the one that uh really really defines the big 10 in a large way this upcoming season and then i had georgia at Ole miss on november 9th Ole miss is getting a ton of hype and this would be the moment to prove a lot of people right and prove some people wrong so when you look at um old miss i mean last year even when they played uh georgia it was domination and that's just kind of the way of things when they've played these big time teams over the past couple of years but this feels like the year where a lot of things can change and if they can pull that off if they can do the things that Lane Kiffin and a lot of people in that building believe that they can do this might be the game where they really take that full step into national conversation into possibly national championship conversation because when you beat a team like Georgia you're going to be in those conversations. That's just the way of things at this point. So this is a fascinating game because it could be kind of a a defining moment for uh, Ole Miss, the same way Missouri at Bama might be for Missouri. I think this could be the same type of deal. So it'll be fascinating to watch that game. This is one of the best out-of-conference matchups in the entire slate. I think when you look at Texas at Michigan on September 7th, there's so much to look forward to. This is a rematch of the 2005 Rose Bowl where the kind of legend of Vince Young over that, you know, year, year and a half was really started. He did incredible things in that game and did incredible things throughout the 2004 uh, season, but that was really when, you know, the legend of Vince Young really, really started, and Texas won that game on a last-second field goal, so there will be Michigan fans that are very, very excited about this game. I think it's one of those that you're going to get a good idea for what these two teams are, what the season is going to look like for these two teams in this game, because it's going to be really, really interesting styles. It's going to be fascinating to watch. Can Texas keep up physically with what's going to be a really good offensive line and a really good defensive line for Michigan? Can uh, Michigan keep up with all the wide receivers and all the talent on the outside that Texas is going to have? So it's going to be fascinating to watch two big brands in one of the best stadiums in the country. It always makes for good football. There's no two ways about that. But this one at four makes me a little bit upset. I felt a little bit icky putting it here, if I'm being totally honest, but it gives you an idea of just how good the top three are going to be. But Michigan at Ohio State on November 30th is always going to be one of the best games of the year. It's always going to be appointment television for the foreseeable future. Uh, Unless Michigan absolutely falls off a cliff or Ohio State the same, you're going to want to tune into this game at noon on that Saturday. So it's going to be fascinating to watch how both these teams develop before this game. But once you get into it, I think we all understand you throw out everything that you thought you knew about these teams. Uh, They're going to play a different level of football. They're going to play with more aggression. And whichever team comes out on top, it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, Ohio State obviously probably needs this game a little bit more than Michigan does, but Michigan's going to be coming in with as much motivation as really anyone in the country for any game in the country. So that one's always a really fun, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that one's always a really fun one. But the top three here are just insane. Uh, Georgia at Bama on September 28th is just out of this world insane. Uh, this rivalry is still alive and well, I promise you. These two teams, these two fan bases still really don't like each other. I'll put that th- that way. I think This one is going to be really, really interesting because it could be kind of a changing of the guard in the SEC. Alabama has been the thorn in Georgia side for quite some time, and they did get one over on them uh, in 2022, or 2021, excuse me, won that national title, but that was really about it uh, when you were talking about Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide over the past couple of years. 
this is the game that they could, you know, walk into their building, beat them, and say, this is our conference now. So it's going to be fascinating to watch that. I think that's a game where everyone's looking forward to it, not only because of the two teams that are coming in, but because of the hate that exists between those two teams. Um, But let's get into the top two. Ohio State at Oregon is going to be fascinating. October 12th, I think this game is might be the defining game in the Big 12 this upcoming year. When you talk about the Big uh, or Big 12, Big 10, when you talk about the Big 10 going into this year, these are the two teams that start the conversation. Now, Michigan and Penn State are not far behind, but these are the two teams that everyone is focusing on, that everyone is circling when they say, who, are, who am I going to send to Indianapolis at the end of the year? Frankly, these are the two teams that I'm leaning towards right now, but I'm not making a prediction until August, so we'll wait on that. Um, this is the chance for Oregon to kick down the door, to say, you know, we, we came over to the Big Ten not only to just get that extra paycheck and, and be a part of a bigger conference, but we're going to win it, and we want to compete with the top teams in the country. And on the flip side for Ohio State, it's a chance to assert dominance. It's a, a chance to say, you know, we're still the class of this conference. We're still one of the best teams in this conference. And then you get to November 30th, and then you really make that statement against Michigan. But this game is going to be fascinating to watch. Oregon with a chance to kick down the door. Ohio State with a chance to shut them up a little bit. So it'll be fascinating to watch that one. And then the top one that I think all of us are looking forward to is Georgia at Texas. Frankly, this one puts me in a little bit of a pickle. I grew up a Texas fan. I went to UGA for college, so I'm at a loss here. But uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. I'll deal with it as it comes. But this one's on October 19th. It is going to be one of the best QB matchups of the entire year. Frankly, if you were to ask me the best QB matchup we'll see between Quinn Ewers and Carson Beck, Texas is going to be absolutely on fire that weekend. It is the same weekend as an F1 race, so the entire city of Austin is going to be on fire. Um, But inside that stadium, it's going to be crazy. Kirby Smart, one of the few losses, frankly, he has as a UGA head coach, came against Texas, and I promise you he has not forgotten that. So when we talk about you know new rivalries popping up in these new conferences, this is one that I continue to point to because I think these teams already don't really like each other, frankly, just because of the way that the fan bases carry each other, Frank, because I know, because I'm a part of both fan bases, and it puts me in a really weird spot. But I do think this is going to be a rivalry that is going to take form in the SEC and be a huge one uh, this upcoming season. So there's obviously a ton of other games in there. There's tons of games this season that are going to be incredible to watch. Obviously, there was going to be a big-time lean to the SEC and the Big Ten in this segment because those are where the big-time teams lie. Let's just be honest. But there was really good, great games across the country. We had Clemson, Florida State not even on this list. We had uh, Kansas State, Arizona is going to be a fantastic game on a Friday night. So there's so many great games this upcoming year, but I tried to narrow it down to 10, and I feel pretty good about my list. But That'll do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a ton to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference for us. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all of the social pages for every update and content you could possibly want. We have incredible people covering every sport you could think of. So definitely, if you need anything in the world of sports, come on over to GSMC and we have you totally covered. But thank you once again for listening and I will see you guys tomorrow.